we're on the corner of 120th and Amsterdam Avenue at the lower pediment of the mud hall of the engineering school. The material of the pediment is this rather uniform grain reddish St. Cloud granite of Proterozoic age from the basement of Minnesota. So you have three generations of material. The granite of the St. Cloud, the blackish stripe, and the younger pinkish stripe like that. And most granites are in fact rich in quartz and potassium felspar, as is this one. What's unusual about the quartz is that you can see it has a distinctly bluish cast to it, which is very unusual for quartz, which is usually clear or smoky or milky or purple when it's amethystine and so on and so forth. Quartz comes in most colors, but the blue of this material is most unusual for SiO2 quartz. So the background material, the St. Cloud granite, is a big batch of silicate liquid that intruded into the crust and began to crystallize as little tiny grains of potassium felspar and quartz. There's been a general solidification and then some tectonic shifting cracks form and new injections as the dark stuff and then the very coarse grained quartz felspar pegmatite is a third generation of fluids that came into this granite body and solidified there. This was a gas pocket at one time. That's why the crystals are coarse. They're not interfering with one another. And so you can think of a granite as a more or less a perfect three-phase mixture like a baby's diaper filling of solids, liquids, and gases. And in the cases where the gas-rich material solidifies, you get large crystals which don't interfere with one another. And so here's big crystals of felspar, big crystals of quartz. We know why they're big. We know why they're late in cross-cutting. What we don't know is what, why they're blue. The color of the quartz that you see here is not intrinsic to the silicon dioxide itself. It's specific to the presence of nanoparticles of TiO2, titanium dioxide, which is a mineral rutile. Now, TiO2 and SiO2 have the same generic chemical formula, so that you might think that titanium could substitute readily for silicon in the quartz structure. But it turns out it doesn't because titanium's a little bit too big to fit comfortably into the quartz structure. But if you melt it up to high temperature, the distinction between titanium and silicon is lost with the result that a small amount of titanium can actually go and fit into the quartz structure at high temperature. But if you let this cool very slowly for a long period of time, if this pluton were buried deeply when it crystallized, or if it never came to the surface and had a long, slow cook at 400 or 500 degrees, the titanium would realize it was too big and it would flake out of solution as little nanoparticles, which are of the right size to scatter the light that you see in the sky as blue, you see it as blue here as well. And any quartz that you find today, or any quartz that you find crystallized as recently as 600 million years ago, never shows the blue color. All the blue quartzes in the world that we know of are ones that are considerably older, they're Precambrian. That is to say, they're older than 600 million years.